Namaste everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be sharing with you a sequence that I like to practice to stretch and strengthen my shoulders. For any of you working towards a headstand, this is a great sequence to practice because it's very important to understand the activation and the strength required in the shoulders to get into a headstand properly and safely. What I'll be demonstrating in this sequence is Ganesha Mudra, which is a hand gesture that helps to activate and strengthen the muscles of the chest and the shoulders. I'll speak a little more about it in just a bit. We'll do some dynamic stretching for the shoulders just to warm all the muscles up. We'll do scapular push-ups. Scapular push-ups are very, very important because they help to strengthen a muscle called the serratus anterior, which helps to stabilize the shoulders but also allow the shoulders to move with more strength and at a greater or at a full range of motion which is very important um, for our headstands then we'll do some variations of planks so the forearm plank the full plank reverse plank and side planks those are great not only to strengthen the shoulders but also the core which is an other important part in the headstands and then we will move into dolphin stretch. So two variations of the dolphin stretch. The dolphin stretch, again, is one of my absolute favorites to not only open up the shoulders, it's a great shoulder opener, but also strengthen the arms. And then we will end with a couple or maybe three stretches, um, static stretches this time for the shoulders, right? So let's get started. We'll begin in a seated position. Find any comfortable seat. Just make sure you're creating a nice and long spine. Line of energy from the sitting bones right up to the crown of the head. So Ganesha Mudra is a mudra that is named after a Hindu deity, uh, Ganesha, who stands for wisdom, but also is known to remove obstacles in our way to uh, achieving our goals. And it physically, it helps to strengthen and activate the muscles in the chest, activate the upper body and the heart space and the shoulders. So let's tune into the symbolism and feel that warmth and that energy that is created in this area, since this is the area we're going to work on today. Bring the left hand in front of your chest, right in the center of your chest, elbows in line with the wrist, palm facing out, thumb facing down. And then the right hand comes right in front of it, palm facing the other palm. We're going to clasp the four fingers and keep the thumbs nice and relaxed on either side. Now with the inhale, we're just clasping the fingers. And with the exhale, we're going to pull the elbows apart. So make sure that you're pulling enough so that you feel that activation of the muscles in the chest. Inhale to release that pull. And exhale, pull the elbows apart. Go at your own breath pace, but stay present with this activation of the muscles, with your breath. Keeping the shoulders away from the ears, the elbows are in line. Let's do one more. Inhale to release that tension and exhale to pull the elbows away. And then slowly release. Great. We're going to start with our stretching now. Uh, you will need a strap and a couple of blocks. In case you don't have these, it's absolutely fine. You can use a towel instead of a strap or just a belt. And for the blocks, just use a, a couple of books or even if you don't have anything, that's fine. So let's begin with our shoulder stretches. Bring the hands to your shoulders and bring the elbows all the way forward. Now we're going to lift the elbows up, take a big round to the back, down, coming back forward, lift them back up and circle them around. So we're going to do two more in this direction. Stay present with what you're feeling in the shoulders. And now let's switch directions. So going all the way down, back as if you wanted to touch your elbows together at the back, up, forward. Let's do two or three more here. Stay with your breath. Make sure that you're taking 
nice and deep breaths in and out through the nose. Last one. Good. And relax. Now, let's grab onto that strap or that towel or a belt. And we're going to just keep it in front and stretch out the arms and grab a hold of that towel or the strap. So keeping the, the arms nice and straight, we're going to lift and bring it all the way back and down. Lift and down. If you find your elbows bending, it, it means that you need a little more space between the hands, okay? So make sure that you're stretching them out nice and wide. Now, after you do this a couple of times, you want to bring the hands a little closer. If that was pretty comfortable for you, bring them a little closer and try doing the same, keeping the elbows straight. So keeping the arms straight. And go nice and slow here. This just helps to bring a bit more mobility in the shoulders. Helps to warm up that joint. And if you think you can go a little closer, try it out, but go nice and slow. So if you think you're getting stuck in it, uh, at any point, just stop there without pushing over the edge. So I'm going to try the last one, getting my hands a little closer. And let's see if I can do it without bending my elbows. Yeah, so this is still okay for me. So you need to listen to your own body and see how you're feeling. And when you think that is enough for you, you're going to stay there and do a couple more rounds. And then release the strap. Okay, we'll keep the strap away. And we're going to make it to our knees now. So come onto your knees. You can tuck all the ten toes under or you can keep them untucked, whatever feels better for you. Stretch the arms forward, interlace the fingers and turn the palms away from you. Inhale to reach up. Exhale, reach the arms forward and round through the back, scoop the belly in, chin toward the chest. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale, round through the back, draw the palms away from you. Last one, inhale. Exhale, round. Good. And then release the hands. And now what we will do is um, we will bring both the arms nice and open, cactus the elbows. So the elbows are in a 90 degree angle. Inhale. And as you exhale, bring the right elbow on top of the left. Hug your shoulders. Pull the elbows away from you. And once again, round through the back chin toward the chest. Let's do that on the other side. So open up the chest. Lift the heart. Elbows 90 degrees. Exhale. Bring the left elbow on top of the right. Hug your shoulders. Draw the belly in. Chin toward the chest. And then release relax good so we'll move into a shoulder opener now um, so we can just start off on our knees keeping the hips right over the knees and stretch the arms forward draw the belly in so you're not dumping your uh, belly down draw the belly in ribs in arms are nice and straight and see if you can just melt the forehead toward the floor if this is too much for you, please feel free to keep a book or a block or a folded towel underneath your forehead. And just take a couple of breaths here, feeling that opening through the shoulders, that beautiful stretch in the shoulders. And if this is pretty comfortable for you and you want to take it one step further, then if you have blocks or books or boxes, whatever, Place them there and you're going to bring your elbows on top of the blocks. Join the palms, keep the hips over the knees and bring the connected thumbs to the back of your neck. Keeping the ribs in, the belly in and melt the chest and the forehead down. 
So this just increases that intensity of the stretch in the shoulders. You can even bring the blocks to a higher level if you want a deeper stretch. And then slowly release. Take it nice and slow when you're releasing. And keep the blocks away. Good. We're going to move into another stretch now. For this, once again, keep your knees hip width distance. Left hand comes slightly towards the center and reach the right arm nice and high toward the sky. Now keep pressing away from the ground with your left hand. Reach the right fingertips high up. With your exhale, scoop the right hand underneath your body. And I'm not going to touch my head or my shoulder or my palm or my hand to the floor as yet. I'm just twisting from the belly up. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, once again, scoop it under without touching the floor. Last one, inhale up. Exhale, this time we're going to bring the right side of the face onto the mat. Right shoulder and the back of the right palm. Now, just have a look at what your hips are doing. They might have shifted. Try to bring them back to center. Draw the belly in. With your left hand, you have a few options. If you already think this is a lot of weight for your neck and your head, you're going to keep the hand here and keep pressing away from the ground. Or you might want to stretch and straighten that arm. This is variation number two. And the last one is to bring the arm around the back and reach for the right inner thigh. So this helps to open up through the left shoulder. See whichever suits you better. Take a couple of breaths wherever you are. And then we're going to slowly come back to where the hand was initially. Press down into that left hand and take it nice and slow as you reach the right arm nice and high and then take a counter stretch. Just wrap the arm around the back, opening up through the right shoulder this time and release. That should feel pretty good in the shoulders. It's a beautiful twist as well. Let's do that on the other side. Right hand comes slightly more toward the center. Reach the left arm high. Exhale, scoop it under without touching the floor. Come back up, inhale expand exhale scoop it under last one and this time we're going to bring the shoulder the back of the hand and the left side of our face to the mat once again just check in with your hips bring them back to center and then see if you want to take any of those variations for the arm or you can just keep the hand where it is So if you're wrapping the arm around the back, try to reach for your left inner thigh and then lift the right shoulder tip as if you want to open up. If your hand is still on the floor, you can just press a little more and twist a little deeper. Come back if you have the arms in any of the two variations that I showed and then press into the hand, lift the left arm nice and high and wrap it around the back, open up through the left shoulder, breathe and release. Good job. Now we're going to move into the scapular push-ups. Like I said, these are great to activate the serratus anterior muscle and to strengthen it. And this also helps us to build awareness of what we want our shoulders to do when we're in a headstand. So let's start with the hip wrists right under the shoulders, palms are nice and flat on the floor, fingers are wide. Now, keeping the neck nice and long in alignment with the spine, we're going to bring the shoulder blades together as if you wanted to hold a pencil in between the shoulder blades and then press away from the ground as you create space between both the shoulder blades, as if you wanted to round the upper back. Once again, Keep the belly in, the ribs in. Sink the chest in between the shoulders and press away. Inhale to soften there. 
keep the arms nice and straight. We're not bending the elbows. And exhale, press away. So I hope that you're feeling this engagement in that muscle in between the shoulder blades. And press away. Now I invite you to come onto your forearms. And this is really important because this is where you're going to start your headstand. Now from here, same thing. You're going to drop the chest. Keep the belly engaged, the ribs in, and push away from the ground. Create space between the shoulder blades. Let's do two more. Last one. And just stay here for a couple of breaths. This is what you want to maintain when you're getting into a headstand. You don't want to collapse in between the shoulder, shoulders. Good job. Now we're going to make it to our belly. So nice and easy, make it down onto your mat. And once again, we're going to activate the uh, muscles of our upper back. So for this, we're going to bring our arms into a cactus position or a W, uh, in the shape of a W. Now lift, inhale, pull the elbows in and down, activating the back muscles and exhale, reach the arms nice and straight forward. Come back to center. Now I want you to keep your legs nice and active so that you're not pinching your lower back. Keep some space in between the legs. Let's do this two more times together. Inhale, lift, peel the chest off the floor, draw the shoulder blades down, elbows in and down. Exhale, reach forward and come back to center. Last one, inhale to lift. Exhale, pull the shoulder blades in and down. Exhale and release nice okay bring the arms the forearms down onto the mat you want to keep them parallel so just hold on to your opposite elbows that's the distance you want in between your forearms and your elbows and the elbows will be under the shoulders we're going to lift up into a plank position so from here scoop the belly in and lift into plank. Now you want your body to be in a nice parallel line with the floor. Keep your neck aligned. Draw the belly in. And breathe here. Now while you're in this plank, I'm just going to explain one more thing. Whenever you're activating the core, you don't want to just pull and suck the belly in. Instead, think of the two hip bones coming in toward the center and then zipping up. So lifting the navel up, so that's the activation you want. So try to keep that in mind while, in, while you're in your plank. Keeping the neck nice and long, the legs are active. Take a break whenever you need to and roll down onto your belly. When you're on your belly, we're going to just come into sphinx pose. So elbows under the shoulders, arms are still parallel, palms are flat on the floor. Once again, I'm not collapsing here, actively lifting my chest. Now, keep the legs active, about hip width distance in between the feet. Now, it might look like a very passive posture, but I'm drawing my belly in, drawing the ribs in together, I'm pressing into my palms, so pressing the palms down onto my mat, and as if I want to pull my mat back. So press and pull pull. What that does is that it automatically brings your heart forward and activates the back muscles. So hold here for a couple of breaths. Keep that activation. Draw the scapula down, the shoulder blades down. And release. Good. Now let's bring our hands to interlace behind our back. Now we're going to press into the palms and we're going to pull the hands away from us. Now again, this is not about just pulling the hands away. It's about drawing the shoulders away from the floor. So scoop the shoulders up, draw the shoulder blades down the back and then pull the hands away. Activating the back muscles to lift and exhale to lower. Let's do that once again. Think of lifting the shoulder tips, 
drawing the shoulder blades in together, press the palms together, reach the knuckles towards your heels, lift the chest. And slowly release. Good. Bring your hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes under, and we're going to lift back up into tabletop position. From tabletop, we're going to come into a full plank now. Now for full plank, once again, bring your wrists under the shoulders, palms are nice and flat. Think of a tray of drinks lying on top of your lower back. You don't want any of those drinks to spill. So keep that nice and stable and extend one leg. Keep those drinks nice and safe there and extend the other leg. So you're coming into that parallel line with the floor once again. Think of what I told you for the activation in the abdominals. Ribs in, navel zipping up, neck in line with the spine and breathe. Think of that scapular push-up so you're not here. Press away, create space between the shoulder blades. And then release one knee and then the other to the floor. Take a little break if you need to shake out the hands, give your wrists a little break. And we're going to move into our side plank. So let's begin with a forearm side plank. So bring your forearm parallel to the front edge of your mat. Elbow under the shoulder, press away from the ground. And you can either keep the knees together, so stack your feet, stack your hips and your legs in general, and lift through the hips, or you can take a full variation, full um, side plank. So the legs are straight, the top leg's foot is in front, and the other one right behind it, we're going to lift and come into a plank. Now if this is comfortable for you, you can even stack both your feet and lift the hips. Make sure the top hip is not falling back, it's stacked over the bottom hip. And breathe here, you can even stretch out the arm. And then slowly return. And we'll just do that on the other side. So come onto your forearm, elbow right under your shoulder. You can either take the first variation where your legs are stacked, or you can join me in the full side plank. There we go. Draw the belly in, ribs in, lift the hips. Arms, our right arm can come up and breathe. So feel that activation in the shoulders. You're not sinking, you're lifting instead. Keep the neck long. You can even look up towards your right fingertips. And then slowly release. Great job. Now, to take it one step further, of course, you can come onto a full plank on the side. So your arm is nice and straight. Wrist under the shoulder. And first variation is to keep the knee down and stretch out the top leg. Belly is in. You're in that side plank. This is also strengthening your shoulder. So it's already working on those muscles. If you want to take it one step further, then same thing, stretch out the legs and stay here and breathe. Keep lifting the hips so you're not sinking. <sighs> Lift. Press away from the ground. Think of pushing away. And then slowly release that knee down and come over to the other side. Now I'm just demonstrating these um, exercises of course you can do more repetitions you can stay longer once you know which variation you want to take so start off with the knee down make sure you have that alignment and then you can maybe straighten the legs you can even stack your feet lift the arm draw the belly in the ribs in, lift the hips and breathe press away from the ground and like I said, it's not only for the shoulders, but it also works on the core, which is really important for headstands. And then slowly drop the knee and come back 
to center. Right, so we've done forearm plank, side plank, full plank with the arms nice and straight. We're going to move into a reverse plank. So for reverse plank, reverse plank not only st strengthen the arms, but um, it also helps to open up the shoulders. So we're going to first keep the knees bent and bring the hands behind us, palms down, fingers facing towards, pointing towards our hips. Okay. Now what you want to try out first is lifting the hips and making sure that your wrists are under the shoulders okay? and lower down. So hip width distance between the feet, between the knees and the hands and the wrists under the shoulders. So you want to keep all of those cues in mind. And we're going to lift the hips, press down into both your, your feet equally. You're using your glutes to keep the hips lifted and press away from the ground with your hands. And lower down. So you can do this a few times, lower and lift, lower and lift. And if you want to take it one step further, then you extend the legs. Now, the way I like to kind of measure where I'm going to place my hands is just to take one elbow distance behind my hips and place the palms down. But this really depends on how long your arms are, how long your torso is. So try it out. If it works for you, great. Otherwise, just make sure your wrist is under the shoulders. So point your toes this time. Draw the belly in, lift the heart, draw the shoulders open so you're really expanding through the chest. And then I'm going to press into my hands, bring the toes down as if I wanted to bring the soles of my feet down and lift through the chest. So my hips are lifted, my chest is open, I'm pressing down through my hands and then lower down. So this is quite an intense stretch and just a posture in general to uh, straight, strengthen the shoulders. So be mindful, go through it slowly, build your strength, and then you can hold a little longer. All right, moving into my favorite, so the dolphin stretch. For the dolphin stretch, we're going to come onto our forearms. So forearms are parallel. Once again, you can measure, hold on to your opposite elbows, and that's the distance you want. Elbows under the shoulders. Stretch out the legs behind you, coming into that forearm plank. And now I'm going to pike the hips up and walk my feet slightly closer. So it's as if we're doing downward facing dog in yoga, if you're familiar with downward facing dog, just that upside down V position. If your hamstrings are a bit tight, bend your knees and lift the hips up high. What is important is to create that straight line in your back and to drop the head so your neck is free and lower down all right so once again you want to really press down through the forearms keep your neck free in a headstand that's really important because i see a lot of people putting all their weight into their head but that's not the way it's supposed to be you're supposed to build strength through the shoulders and your arms okay let's do that once again so stretch out the legs, come into that plank. Remember that scapular push-up. So create space between the shoulder blades and now pike the hips up, dropping the head, walk your feet a little closer. Lift the hips up high, bend the knees if you need to. Draw the ribs in, create length in the sides of your waist. Keep pressing away from the ground with your forearms, your hands, your elbows. You can even walk a little closer. So experiment, see how close you can get. Bending the knees if necessary. And hold here for a few breaths. I'm sure you can feel those shoulders working. The upper arms are on fire. Let's take two more breaths. And then slowly walk your feet back and lower down and take a little break if you need to. And the next one, uh, like I told you, we'll do two variations. The next one we will do is adding a little movement. So I'm going to demonstrate it once. You can continue with your little mini break. And I really invite you to stay in the static version if the second version is a little too much. 
for your shoulders. If you feel any impingement in the shoulders, you want to stay away from this and just stay with the static stretch, all right? So for this, it's the same again, coming into that forearm plank. I'm going to walk my feet closer, keep the belly in, and now I'm going to lean forward and then come back onto my heels. Forward and push the heels back. Forward and back. All right, so this helps to bring in a little more mobility and strength in the shoulders. But like I said, if you feel any impingement, you're going to uh, just stick to the previous version. What I also like to do is interlace my fingers and keep the thumbs up just to like reach my nose toward the tip of my um, thumbs. So you can try that out, but just make sure your elbows are still under the shoulders. So lift up into your dolphin. Okay, keep your knees bent if you need to. And we're going to lean forward, maybe touch the nose to the tips of the thumbs and then kick the heels back. Release the head. Forward and back. The important thing here is that you're keeping that back nice and long, nice and straight. The hips are high and you're pressing away from the ground without collapsing in between the shoulders. Do that one more time. And then release. And take child's pose. Just stretch out your shoulders. Just take a breath here. Good. And the last one we will do is downward dog and plank, okay? This is also great to build strength in the core. I'm not focusing on core in this video. It's more about the shoulders, but I'm just going to show one exercise that you can also include in this sequence. So come into your full plank. Make sure that tray of drinks on your hips are nice and, are nice and safe and stable. Press away from the ground. Now you want to bring the heels right over the balls of your feet. Press away from the ground, keep the neck long. Now, pike the hips up, come into downward facing dog. You can even bend the knees, push the hips up. Now, you want to protect your shoulders. You're not here. Push the hips up and back. Bend the knees if you need to. And create that long back. Come back to plank position. Shoulders over the wrists. And press back into downward dog. Think of pushing the ground away from you with your, sh with your hands and externally rotating your shoulders. So opening up through the shoulders. Let's do that one more time. Hold and downward facing dog. And then slowly release. Good, give your wrists a little break, shake your hands out. And now we're moving into the stretches. Now for the stretches, you might need a strap or a little towel. We're going to do eagle arms and cow face arms. So let's start with eagle arms. Come to any comfortable seat. You can sit cross-legged. You can sit on blocks if you need to. And bring the right arm in front of your chest. Cross it over this way and left arm on top of it you want to make sure that you're crossing the arms as close as you can to your chest and then wrap the arms around one another so you're wrapping the arms around maybe your palms will reach together maybe not that's fine the most important is that stretch that you're feeling in the shoulders now you might be somewhere here the elbows are down and close to your chest. You want to lift the elbows and pull them away from your chest. This creates space in between the shoulders and you'll really feel that amazing stretch. So once again, if you're here, lift and pull the elbows away. Think of lifting the fingertips up and stay here for a couple of breaths. Again, if this is too much for you, there's always another option. So you can just do what we did in the beginning, hugging your um, shoulders. All right, so wherever you are, take one more breath. Keeping the shoulders away from your ears. And then slowly release. 
All right, we'll do that on the other side. So this time the right arm was in, um, at the bottom. We'll bring the left arm first now. Cross the right arm on top as close as you can to your chest and wrap the arms around. Palms together or not, that's fine. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. Notice if one shoulder is hiking up toward your ear. Keep the elbows away from you and lift. And breathe here. Keep the neck aligned with your spine. Once again, if this is too much for you, you're just going to hug your shoulders and keep the elbows away from your chest and lifted. Let's take two more breaths here. Feel that stretch in the upper back. And this is also great if you work on the computer a lot or you have a little tension in your shoulders and your upper back and then slowly release great job we're moving into cow face arms so i'm going to show it to you from the back so first option is to bring the right arm high up bend the elbow and try to touch the center of your back and then with the other hand you're going to lift that elbow and just lean over to the side to feel a deeper stretch or you can just stay straight all right so this is option number one on the right side on the left side same thing reach for the center of your back with your left palm with your right hand reach for the elbow lift and maybe you lean to the side or maybe you stay straight so what's important is that your neck is in line with your back now for the cow face arms we're going to do the same thing right arm bends reach for the center of your back left arm rotates so you're rotating from the shoulder open up through the chest bend the elbow and you reach for your fingers if you can't reach the fingers that's fine you hold on to your clothes and then slowly start to come a little closer last option is to use a towel or anything that you can grab onto this way and then slowly you'll make it closer now what you want to be careful of when you're here so have a look at this if you're here then there are not just one but a few things that are wrong here of course your neck is not in alignment so you want to pull the neck and make it nice and straight the elbow the right elbow should not be pointing forward it should be pointing up okay so if you cannot reach your fingers you're just going to keep some distance or just do the first variation i showed and last one the shoulder this is not what we want we don't want to round through the back and internally rotate the shoulder instead lift open up through the shoulder so you're externally rotating the shoulder and then you reach all right once again if you don't reach your fingers that's absolutely fine and release and we're going to do that on the other side so left arm bends reach for the center of your back right arm rotates back so open up through the shoulder and see where you reach for me this side is pretty as you can see there's always a difference on one side compared to the other so just listen to your body and see where you reach without forcing or pushing just approach it with love and compassion just treat your body right so be nice and mindful see where you reach if this is too much for you on this side you can just stick to the first variation take a couple of breaths here and then we're going to release great so um, those are the stretches i wanted to show you we've done some static stretching we've done some dynamic stretching and the last one that you can choose to do is of course child's pose so what i like to do to stretch out my shoulders is to bring my knees nice and wide toes together sink the hips towards the heels and stretch out my arms so although my arms are stretched forward i'm not 
pulling my shoulders up to my ears and creating tension. Instead, I'm breathing into my shoulders, into my neck and allowing everything to just melt and feel nice and soft. Now, if you want to take it a little further, you can do this with me. To inhale, reach forward through the crown of your head and stretch out your arms. Walk your hands towards your left side. Lengthen through the spine and exhale as you melt the chest down. Now, you want to keep your hips still on your heels and maybe you walk your right hand and reach it on top of the left hand. That just creates a nice stretch in the side of your shoulder. And then you can walk your hands all the way through center to the right. Extend through the spine. Inhale. Exhale. Melt. Keeping the hips on top of the heels. Walk your left hand to the right hand. Maybe it lands on top of it. And melt your chest down. Nice job, and then slowly walk your hands back to center. Take a breath here. And walk your hands back towards you. So this was the sequence I wanted to share with you. I hope that you found it useful. Please do let me know. Um, of course, this was just focused on the shoulders, um, just to create strength there and opening. Uh, of course, for headstands, you need to work on a few other things like core strength. I'll do another video for that. Let me know what exactly you would like. For those of you who requested for this video, thank you for your request. I hope that this answers your questions. Please let me know once you practice it. Um, have fun, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Lots of love.